Good morning, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Max City Morning Show. I'm your host, Elliot Pierre, and we're going to start this show off the same way we start every show off, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, and the fact that you spend it with us truly does mean the world to me. So thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. How she caught me, loves. You're listening to the Max City Morning Show. All right, and we're back. Okay, we got a fun one today. This guy's been coming to Fort McMurray for years. To say he's an entertainer is an understatement, so I'm excited to hear all about his adventures uh, all around Alberta and the world based on his YouTube channel that I checked out last night. So as everybody knows, I do not introduce my guests because they can do a better job at that than myself. So on that note, sir, can you tell everybody at home who you are and what you're about? <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, my name is Danny Hooper and uh, um, I am an entertainer. I've been coming up to Fort McMurray for many, many years. I started my career uh, officially back in 1975 as a, a country music uh, singer. Uh, I entered a contest down at Klondike Days uh, on the Bonanza stage there, and it was CFCW Radio's first ever country star search that they had. Okay. A yeah, talent contest, <clears throat> and I was a finalist in this thing. I didn't win it. <clears throat> Pardon me, I was, uh, I was second place. Okay. The, the guy that won, you know, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a thing with me because the, the guy that won, uh, he ended up dying like about six months later, regrettably. Okay. Uh, but I am bitter still to this day that they didn't contact me and and give me his trophy because I, I really felt <laughs> it's kind of, why do you have a runner up in a contest like that? It's like being Miss Rodeo Canada and there's, they got the queen, right? Uh, Rodeo queen. And then they got the princess. And the reason you have a princess, the reason you have a deputy sheriff, the reason you always have these second place people is if anything happens to the That's right. person at the top of the pole, that, that other person slides, slides right in. in. So right. I never got the guy's trophy. Um, and uh, I, uh, to this day remain just a finalist in that competition but the prize <laughs> was not a bad one um the first place prize was a case of whiskey i remember that and okay. that's probably what killed this poor bastard but anyway yeah. <laughs> um uh, my prize was a recording contract with royalty records okay. and it was, it, was, it was country music and i'd grown up in an alcoholic home where my dad was a huge country music fan and and uh, grew up in a home with lots of booze and partying and country music all the time so yeah. it was an easy slide for me to get into the into the country music business dad got me my first guitar when i was 10 years old so okay. by 1975 i was i was ready to enter this contest and so the contract uh, the uh, the contract was a recording contract with royalty records right and at the time I was attending college in Camrose, Alberta. I was going to Camrose Lutheran College, which is a whole other story. The family was, I, I was raised on a cattle ranch out in Tomahawk, Alberta, a little hamlet out there. And, okay. and coming off the farm, I didn't want to go into the big city, the big university. So I went to Camrose Lutheran College. Right. A uh, whole other story there. I was the first uh, a, a Catholic to be elected as president of the student union at go. Camrose Lutheran College, which yeah. is kind of a neat thing. And the reason I, I won that with a landslide, I, I will say, um, I remember that election proudly, but it was my strong campaign platform. Everybody else I was running against wanted more Bible study and more choir practice and this kind of thing. And, right. and my campaign platform was to get rid of the curfew on the girls' dorm um, <laughs> true, absolutely true story. Right? I know it is because the I girls had to be in at eight o'clock on weeknights and I think nine thirty on the weekends into their dorm, and I turned it into a human rights issue. Right, and I won a landslide, <laughs> landslide victory. I got all the guys voted for me, yeah. and of course, uh, all of the bad girls, which is about half of them, Lutheran girls. So. <laughs> Uh, anyway, landslide victory. But anyway, so I'm going to college, and my plan at that point was I was going to get into law. I, uh, okay. I was going to be able to, aviation law is what I wanted to do. Okay. So I had this in the back of my mind. But anyway, ran off to enter, to enter this little talent contest, get second prize, get the recording contract, go back to college. Uh, and while I'm in college for my second year, I record the album that came along with this contract. Yeah. Before I'd finished college that second year, I was nominated for a Juno Award uh, for Best New Male Vocalist in 1976, I think that was. Okay. So all this stuff is kind of happening. I've got an album out. I've got a Juno nomination. I've never entertained... I think I was 17 years old. You can do the math. I don't think I was old enough to play the bars. Yeah. So I'd never had a full band. Um, but anyway, I, I talked to my dad at the time, and I said, uh, you know, I, I think I'd like to give this country music a, a run. 
and see if I can, you know, make a, a living doing that. And he was all for that because he is Mr. Party. So right. he thought this is great. And uh, I quit uh, college after two years and hit the road. And when I say hit the road, I, I remember I, this is a, another true story. I advertised in the Edmonton Journal because I had this album. I had this Juno nomination. I placed a classified ad in the Edmonton Journal and I said, country recording star needs band. Yeah. So, and I had a guy respond that had a band and they were running off their lead singer. So he hired me and we hit the road. And back then you'll remember that every little town, uh, every little bar had live entertainment six right. nights a week. So I remember back then, one of the first places I played was the Riv uh, here in town. Here in back Fort Mac, back yeah. when it was 800 or 850 seats. That was a right. wild, those were wild days. No doubt. But we'd hit the road, we'd play Vermilion for a week, uh, or Vagraville for a week, Vermilion for a week, Provost for a week, Lloyd Minster for a week, uh, Meadow Lake for a week, Prince Albert for a week, Saskatoon for a week, Regina for a week, Swift Current. We'd do two, Tabor, Brooks, Lethbridge. You'd go out on that whole swing, that whole circuit. Well, you'd be gone for four months. Yeah. Get back yeah. into Edmonton just for long enough to have dinner uh, and then head up north and do the whole swing up through the north country. So yeah. uh, during 1970. Uh, between 76, 7, 8, and 9, I was on the road an average of 48 to 49 weeks a year yeah. as a country music singer. Uh, then in late 1979, November 19, about this time of year, uh, my dad and I opened up our own country music nightclub in downtown Edmonton. It was called Danny Hooper's Stockyard. And uh, it turned out to be a really popular uh, night spot. We used to get a ton of business from people coming down to the city from Fort McMurray on the weekends. Right. And uh, yeah, Merle Haggard played there and Tammy Wynette and Ray Price and Gene Watson and Farron Young, Ferlin Husky, Ian Tyson, all of these big stars we had there. And then when we didn't have the big stars in, I was playing with my band. So yeah. I started off in the country music business and I've just kind of since branched out into all different areas of the entertainment world. So That's super interesting because I would say most people, especially myself, don't have a not clue who I am or what I've done. Not as a country uh, music artist. Now, you've transitioned into something else, which is a fast talker. Real fast talking, yeah. Back uh, many, many years ago, uh, it was actually back in 1987, I have, I have an uncle that's, uh, who is an auctioneer. Right. And he convinced me to come along with him one night. He was doing a Ducks Unlimited auction. Okay. And he said, come along and just MC this thing and entertain a little bit. And, yeah. And uh, so I joined him that night. And halfway through the night, he, he called me up on the stage to auction off a Ducks Unlimited print. I'd never auctioned. But of course, being an entertainer, I just tried to get the people laughing. And, right. And that which I was able to do. And at the end of that evening, he said, you should seriously think about getting your auctioneer's license and focusing on fundraising these yeah. fundraising auctions. He said, I get calls for these things twice a week. And he said, I think somebody could turn this into a business. And, and to my knowledge, I think I was probably the first auctioneer around to, to start charging a, a buck to do this. And, yeah. and it's turned into a major business now. You know, prior to COVID, we were still doing 85, 90 events a year yeah. all across North America, uh, proudly working for the smallest little school groups and sport teams and church groups on up to the National Football League as a client. And I've worked many times with the David Foster Foundation and yeah. Rotary Clubs and hospital foundations like the Northern Lights uh, Health Foundation have been a client for many, many years. And yeah. it's just been a really cool business. Yeah, it's really neat. And it's, like, I love the story because when you're going to school, there's no way somebody's going to like, you know what I'm going to do when I grow up? I'm going to be an auctioneer. No, like, yeah, there's no part of my career. I've, I've had yeah. the most uh, wonderful career. Um, you know, I'm turning 65 years old here in just a few weeks and, uh, I look back on my career and it's just been a ton of fun, but none of it was planned, Right. you know, other than giving country music a shot. And it's That's just, right. it seemed like, you know, God just opened one door for me after another and, uh, yeah. and I'd walk through those doors and it was always something cool on the other side. So That's I've been right. very, very blessed. Yeah. yeah. Now, outside of this, you've started a new venture throughout COVID and I watched a bunch of them last night. You started a YouTube channel. What's like, how did you start it? Why did you start it? Like, where did you get this inspiration inspiration from? Well, the YouTube channel, uh, you're right. I did, did start through COVID. It's called Danny Hooper Edibles. That's right. And I got to admit, initially it attracted a bit of the wrong crowd. <laughs> or you the know. right crowd. <laughs> or the right, it's, but the name's attracting a crowd. Yeah. We're getting people checking them out and that's all I care about. Yeah. But it's a cooking channel. Yeah. And uh, I have always loved cooking uh yeah. when i was a kid one of my first jobs i was 15 years old and 
and uh, I got a job with a um, as a bull cook in a seismic uh, camp up on Ellesmere Island, not far from the North Pole. Okay. Uh, Sixty-eight man uh, seismic crew, and I was up there uh, peeling potatoes and dicing onions and setting the table for sixty-eight men, yeah. and packing lunches and helping to cook dinner. And so I've just always been around food and and food prep. I've always loved it. And of course, yeah. we had the nightclub. It was a steakhouse, mm-hmm. so um, I got to learn there and. And uh, so during COVID, uh, my wife, by the way, comes from Fort McMurray. Okay. Uh, yep. She's a crotch chuck girl. Her dad was an engineer with Syncrude. And uh, anyway, uh, during COVID, we couldn't go out to the restaurants. They were all closed and we right. both are foodies. Yeah. So uh, I decided to dig in. And I realized that in all my travels, I've traveled uh, fairly extensively. I've been to Bali four times and Italy five times. And I've been to Greece and all over the place. And whenever I travel, the th- uh, one of the things I really love to do is take a cooking class or a cooking lesson. Oh. Okay. And I collect cookbooks from nice. my travels. That's the souvenir that I buy. And so oh, I've got right this on. massive collection of great cookbooks and, and scribblers full of cooking lessons from Bali and all these places. So I started digging into that stuff during COVID and, and started cooking for Barb and, and I for these meals. And she said, wow, she said, this is, you know, you got to get these recipes out there. And, and so I started this cooking channel and it's called Danny Hooper Edibles. So yeah, yeah I do a lot of, uh, lot of uh, wood fire, charcoal, uh, a lot of smoking. And, and you're just in like. Spain though. Yeah, was, we just got that back was from one Spain. One of the episodes that I was watching, a lot of highlight reels in there. Did you like that? Yeah, and you went to that, um, like that outdoor area where they were, uh, like a tapas place. Oh yeah, like that was something. Isn't else. that amazing? Oh, yeah. Spain. Yeah, we've been twice in the past three years, and um, I went. Uh, this trip was two weeks, and I took cooking classes the whole time. We traveled with a guy who's a chef, yeah, and uh, we stayed in Airbnbs so is that Luis, the guy who is the chef that was traveling with me, uh, could take me to the fish markets and and all the mercados, the markets every day to pick out what we were going to cook yeah. that evening. And and so I've got a whole bunch of episodes in the can that just need to be edited, yeah. and I'll be loading up a lot more of the Spain stuff. Yeah, they're cool. And I finished watching the brisket episode too. Like you've cooked a. Uh, an array of different things, that's for sure. Yeah, like a lot of open fire. I got the Traeger smoker and, yeah. you know. It's very cool. So now, what brings you to Fort McMurray this time around? Well, this time around, this is one of my favorite reasons to come to Fort McMurray, and I've been doing it for many years now, and that's to serve the Northern Lights Health Foundation and their Festival of Trees. Um, I came up here with my manager many years ago now. We did a little event called a Lunch and Learn, and as a fundraising auctioneer, uh, I took my manager. We traveled throughout Western Canada, uh, hosting little luncheons for nonprofit organizations in different communities. Right. And uh, the Northern Lights folks attended that Lunch and Learn and kind of learned uh, you know, what we had to share about uh, kicking up your auction events, your fundraising auction events. And so they hired uh, me. I, Cindy and I were Cindy uh, and I were talking yesterday. I don't know how many years I've been coming up here. It's, it's been a long time doing the Festival of Trees. But yeah. uh, this year, of course, with it, uh, <clears throat> we're having to go virtual again, yeah. um, unfortunately, because of the ongoing pandemic. So uh, I've been up here just shooting some, uh, all of the different trees that are available for the online auction starting on the 19th to the 21st there later we go, this week. which is this upcoming weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's, thanks for coming. Thanks for doing the work. Yeah. Now, we're at the part of the show. It's Tanner's segment. It's called the Max City Minute. He's going to ask you some questions. I have no idea what he's going to ask you, so I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Okay. Tanner, hit him with the Max City Minute. All right. Question number one. What is the most memorable piece of meat you've ever eaten? Oh, the most memorable piece of meat I've ever eaten was on an elk hunt uh, years ago. And uh, we took the back straps out of that uh, elk that uh, we got and just cooked it on the uh, open fire that night. So that was it. Nothing but a box of, took along a box of Malden sea salt and just put a little bit of that Malden sea salt on that uh, and cooked it on the open fire. That's, that's the best piece of meat I remember eating. But I am a carnivore. I love meat. There you go. Question number two. As a matter of fact, if I can interrupt, I, Tanner, I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> I just want to tell you how much of a carnivore I am. Is that on my on my YouTube cooking channel, Danny Hooper Edibles, I have different playlists. I have a playlist for for global recipes and and uh, barbecue meat, smoked meat, all these different types of things. I have a vegan a playlist, but there's no videos in there. <laughs> That's awesome. Probably never will be. That's awesome. <laughs> Question number two. What is one story from your many years of entertainment that stands out the most to you? Oh, <clears throat> oh, there's been there's been so many, many that I, I would love to tell, but obviously can't. Uh, one from the auction business uh, years ago, I was doing an auction a few years ago for the David Foster Foundation in Toronto, and Andrea Bocelli 
was the uh, auctioneer, or not the auctioneer, I was the auctioneer. He was the entertainer that night, yeah. and he donated an auction item. It was two seats on his private jet to fly back to Florence, Italy, to stay with he and his wife in their home for four days wow. and four nights. And he said, I hope you don't mind my singing. He said, I sing for two hours every morning out by the pool. We have lunch, some wine, a siesta, and then I sing for an hour in the afternoon. So if you don't mind that, and, and those uh, two seats sold for $100,000. So that's, there's been lots of cool things in the auctions. That is cool. Question number three. What is your craziest story you have from your time running a club? Oh, wow. I think uh, there's lots of crazy ones. Uh, my dad uh, used to book the acts for the club, and he booked this guy. He was some grand old Opry star many years ago. I, I don't even remember the guy's name, but we booked him off his promo picture. And that's never a good idea because we picked this guy up at the airport, and he had an oxygen mask on, and uh, got him on the stage, and he was way past his best before date. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that was one. Uh, so we had to refund a lot of tickets there. Another one was uh, another country music star. I probably shouldn't mention his name, but um, he was sitting on the edge of the stage and uh, singing to some little kids because he had a children's song that was a hit years ago, and he was so drunk he fell off the stage. And... Little kids just sit there and thought that was part of his act, but it, it wasn't. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I could write a book on That's all that awesome. stuff. That's awesome. You could. Yeah. Question number four. From all your travels, what's the best restaurant you've eaten at? The best restaurant I've eaten at was in Florence, Italy, and I want to say it was called the Boucheria, but that name doesn't... It, it's not the right name. It was, but anyway, it was down in the basement. You had to go down about, oh, it was a deep, deep, deep basement and a very, very old. And I was going for their Bistecca Florent, Ella Florentine, which is their, they do a huge, what we would call a porterhouse steak, a big T-bone. And they come off their uh, Chianina beef there and their animals are enormous. So this steak is like that. It's about that thick and they cook it on open fire and then they slice it. They drizzle it with olive oil, sea salt, fresh rosemary and uh, lemon juice. So I'd, and, and Florence is, this place is famous in Florence for their bistecca. So I'd gone there and I said, why the name for the place? And yeah. the waitress said, well, the name means it, it's like this, this is, and this is where they used to behead people. It was a prison centuries ago and oh, they used okay. to, the restaurant was right down in the room where they used to do the beheadings so that was kind of a weird one but uh, that was definitely a memorable restaurant very cool yeah and your final question what is the weirdest thing you've ever auctioned off uh there's been some weird ones um an open heart surgery uh i auctioned off the university of uh, alberta or the university hospital foundation in edmonton uh, this was an auction. They, it was a chance to attend uh, right in the OR, to yeah. stand right there dressed up to watch an open heart surgery. And that wow. actually sold for 1800 bucks. And I, I think I sold that at the Spruce Grove Rotary Auction. I did their auction for 24 years in a row. But that was one weird one. Another weird one that I sold was in Cold Lake. A local doctor donated a painless vasectomy for two. And I, which I, <laughs> I made me laugh because I thought that's how they come. Like, do you need to clarify it's for two? What's the point of getting one done? Yeah. You know, maybe get, I'll get one done. We'll see how that goes. And then I'll come back, get the other one done. But yeah. it was a painless vasectomy for two. And I thought, who's going to bid on this uh, here and in Alberta where you can get it done for free? But it sold for 3,800 bucks. Uh, and oh, when I sure. said You're sold, right. <laughs> so I had two guys going on this thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I finally said sold, dropped the hammer at 3,800 bucks, and I could see why he paid so much money. His wife jumped up and went, woohoo! She was about eight and a half months pregnant. Yeah. So, so that was kind of a weird <laughs> one. <laughs> and those awesome. have been your five questions. Well, listen, man, that's the end of the show. 20 minute flies. So next time you come back to Fort McMurray, please, please, please. Come again. You have way more stories. I have so many more questions for you. But before we cut you loose today, everybody gets a shameless shout out or plug. So the cameras are on you. The lights are on you. Have fun. Please support the Northern Lights Health Foundation Festival of Trees. Make sure you get online here. And uh, the website for it is give to NL. Lights, hf.ca to bid on the amazing trees that we have in this year's online auction uh, we did video clips for all of them they're all incredible and we hope you get out and support your health foundation uh, i can't think of a more important uh, organization here uh, in your community
There we go. All right. Well, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world, that's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. It does mean the world to me. I hope you're having a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.